Tesla currently has a big lead over Volkswagen when it comes to EV market share, but can VW catch up? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. I recently read an article that quoted Herbert Diess, which is Volkswagen's CEO, and he said, quote, It's an open race. We are quite optimistic that we still can keep the pace with Tesla and also at some stage probably overtake the U.S. car maker. When I read this article, it got me thinking, what will the future look like for Tesla and VW, and can VW really catch up? Electric vehicles are here to stay, and I believe they are poised to overtake gas-burning vehicles in the current decade. The two most promising contenders in the EV race, in my opinion, of course, are Tesla and VW. While VW is ahead of other legacy automakers, and they seem to be on the right track, Tesla currently has a big head start. To compare the two companies, I'm going to look at seven key metrics. We're going to compare battery electric vehicle sales, battery supply, range and efficiency, cost per mile of range, the technology, the brand value, and the charging infrastructure and speed. So first of all, let's compare the battery electric vehicle sales between the two auto manufacturers. Tesla sold their first electric car, which is the original Roadster, in 2008. And between the period of 2008 and 2019, they sold approximately 901,461 vehicles. VW first started selling electric cars in 2013. And from 2013 to 2019, they've sold approximately 125,000 vehicles. Tesla's current lineup includes the Model S, which has been available since 2012, and you have a choice of two variants, the Long Range model, which has a range of 373 miles, or the Performance model, which has a range of 348 miles. The second vehicle available from Tesla is the Model 3, and that's been available since late 2017. You have your choice of the Standard Range Plus with a 250-mile range, the Long Range All-Wheel Drive model with a range of 322 miles, or the Performance variant with a 310-mile range. Tesla's third vehicle is a Model X, which has been available since late 2015. And once again, you have the choice of two variants, the Long Range model with 328 miles of range and the Performance variant with 305 miles of range. VW currently sells two electric models, the e-Golf, which has been available since 2014, and the e-Up, which has been available since 2013. The e-Golf comes in two trim choices, the SE or the SEL. Both have a 123-mile range for the 2020 models. The e-Up is only available in Europe and currently has a 162-mile range according to the WLTP cycle. So when we compare battery electric sales between the two companies, it's obvious that Tesla has sold quite a bit more electric vehicles, so they get the win on this category. The Achilles heel of electric vehicles is, of course, battery supply. This has been the limiting factor for Tesla in the past and also for other auto manufacturers as they have attempted to bring EVs to the market. At Gigafactory 1 in Sparks, Nevada, Tesla currently manufactures the 2170 cells found in the Model 3 and soon to be released Model Y and have demonstrated a clear path to producing over 54 gigawatt hours per year in the same footprint. So with a capacity of 35 gigawatt hours, Tesla can make approximately 564,000 Model 3s. This is assuming around 62 kilowatt hour average per car between the 50 kilowatt hour standard pack and the 74 kilowatt hour long range pack. A move to 54 gigawatt hours in the near future would add 306,000 more vehicles that could be manufactured and would give them a capacity of 870,000 vehicles. Also add that to the fact, in the near future, Gigafactory Shanghai should be producing its own batteries, and I believe Gigafactory Berlin will eventually be making batteries in Germany as well. So with all this being said, Tesla has planned ahead and has plenty of battery capacity for their future vehicles. So where does VW sit in regards to battery production and battery availability? Recently, VW announced that it would buy 50 billion euros worth of battery cells and has identified Sweden's Northvolt, South Korea's SKI, LG Chem, and Samsung SDI, as well as China's CATL as strategic partners. So they have signed contracts with these companies to purchase batteries for their future vehicles. 
I also found mention on the Volkswagen's website of a pilot line in Germany where they are testing out their own production of lithium-ion battery cells for research and development purposes. Recently, they participated in an equity capital raise for a battery gigafactory in Sweden with Northvolt, which is a battery startup founded by two former Tesla executives. In addition to the factory in Sweden, they plan a 50-50 joint venture with Volkswagen on another gigafactory in Germany in the future. So when you compare the battery supplies between the two companies, it's obvious that Tesla has the lead here. Tesla controls their own destiny on batteries through a Panasonic joint partnership in Gigafactory Nevada. This gives Tesla a technology and price advantage as well as more of a supply guarantee. Now VW is serious and they have secured a lot of theoretical supply, but the market is going to be very competitive, prices can be raised, and a lot of other people will be vying for those same batteries. I do believe it will be very important for VW to ramp up their own battery production in the near future, and they appear ready to do that. So because Tesla has already proven a lot of capacity and they have control over their own battery production, I'm going to go ahead and give Tesla the win on the battery supply as well. So what about range and efficiency? So the long range Model S has a range of 373 miles according to the EPA. The Model 3 long range all wheel drive has a range of 322 miles and the Model X long range all wheel drive model has a range of 348 miles. VW's current models have a range of 123 miles for the e-Golf and a range of 162 miles for the WLTP standard for the e-Up. If you go to fueleconomy.gov and look at the efficiency of the two vehicles, you see there that the 2020 Volkswagen e-Golf is a very good vehicle. It is very efficient, but Tesla still has the lead with their standard range plus Model 3, which has twice the range and a better combined efficiency. So once again, Tesla wins on range and efficiency. So what is the value proposition of these vehicles? What is the cost per mile of range? So recently I did a video about the cost per mile of range comparison between Tesla vehicles and some other vehicles. And I included this graph which showed the cost per mile of range of all the Tesla vehicles, both future and current. You'll see there that the Model 3 long range all-wheel drive has a cost per mile of range of only $152.14. When you compare this to the VW eGolf SE, you'll see that it has a cost per mile of range of $259.31. So here's the complete cost per mile of range comparison. The Model S long range all-wheel drive model has a cost per mile of range of $214.45. The Model 3 Long Range All-Wheel Drive has a cost per mile of range of $152.14. The Model X Long Range All-Wheel Drive has a cost per mile of range of $259.12. And you compare that to the e-Golf, which has a cost per mile of range of $259.31. So when you purchase the e-Golf, you're paying the same cost per mile of range as a Tesla Model X. Tesla clearly has a much better value for their vehicles. So once again, Tesla gets the win for the lowest cost per mile of range. What about technology? Here's a quote from Herbert Diess, the Volkswagen CEO, about technology. Quote, in the long run, I think we might have a bit of an advantage because of scale. On the hardware side, there is probably not so big a difference because they, meaning Tesla, also have a dedicated electric platform and they're quite big already for an EV manufacturer. But when it comes to the next big thing, which is software, Tesla is strong in software. But software really is a volume game. If you do software, you have to use 10 million devices, not 1 million. So Herbert Diess here has admitted that Tesla is very strong in software and they're very good in hardware as well. While I am confident that VW will have good technology with their future vehicles, they have shown some struggle releasing their ID3 vehicles and they've had some software struggles. I pulled this article from autoblog.com and it said, quote, Volkswagen ID3 reportedly suffering software problems. So when you look at Tesla and the technology, they have over the air updates, they have done performance and range upgrades, they have a vertical integration where their entire system was designed from the ground up and is made to work really well together, which is why I believe they have such great efficiency. 
They have superior safety features like autopilot and the full self-driving features. They have games, video streaming, and more. And they have the best battery longevity and performance of all other electric vehicles. So from the information that we have today, it appears like Tesla still has a technology lead, even if you include the future VW vehicles. What about brand value? So Tesla only sells battery electric vehicles, whereas VW still manufactures diesel and gas burning vehicles. And VW is still recovering from the Dieselgate scandal. When it comes to brand loyalty, I don't think any other brand comes close to the strong community that Tesla has. Tesla also has the market lead, and as the current market leader, it has the momentum and the head start advantage. Tesla also recently surpassed VW's market cap, with Tesla's current market cap here when I'm recording this video at the end of January just over $100 billion, whereas VW's market cap is sitting somewhere just under $94 billion. So both in market cap and customer value, I do believe that the Tesla brand when it comes to electric vehicles is stronger and we give the win to Tesla on this one as well. So the last metric that I want to talk about between these vehicles is of course charging. Not only the speed of charging on the vehicles, but also the charging networks available for these vehicles. So here we are at the beginning of 2020 and the Tesla network has reached over 1800 supercharging stations. If you count the individual superchargers of these stations, they have eclipsed 15,000 individual superchargers. The US average cost per kilowatt hour to charge your vehicle is right around 28 cents. Part of the settlement between the US government and VW for Dieselgate was that they were required to set up a charging network in America, and this is Electrify America. Electrify America currently has 390 live stations throughout the United States, with 82 more coming soon. They have 1,346 CCS chargers, 390 CCS slash Chatamo chargers, and 82 level 2 chargers. When it comes to charging costs, it can get very expensive with the Electrify America chargers, with some rates up to 99 cents per minute for charging. If we look at the max charging rate of the individual vehicles, we see that the Tesla Model 3 has a max charging rate of 250 kilowatts, the 2020 Tesla Model S has a max charging rate of 200 kilowatts, and the 2020 e-Golf has a max rate of 40 kilowatts. Future VW vehicles in the ID series should have charging rates somewhere around 120 plus kilowatts, according to some of the information I've read recently. So once again, with charging infrastructure and the speed of charging for the actual vehicles, Tesla once again is ahead. So in the first part of this video, we covered where Tesla and VW are currently with just a little bit of touching on the future. Now I want to talk a little more about the future and how these companies will look in the next five years or so. So in the future, VW is going to be adding four new electric vehicles in the VW lineup. The ID Cross will be coming as a crossover SUV sometime hopefully in late 2020. The ID Buzz Microbus will be coming out sometime in 2022. The ID Vision Sedan has not been announced yet as far as a date, but that should be coming out in the next several years as well. And the ID3 should be coming this summer of 2020 in Europe, and this is their compact sedan. According to a press release on VW's website, they do plan to produce quite a few electric vehicles in the future. Quote, Volkswagen's electric offensive has picked up speed as planned. The first ID3 cars will appear on Europe's road in the summer. Over the next few years, Volkswagen intends to become the world market leader in e-mobility and is investing $33 billion in these efforts throughout the group by 2024, including $11 billion in the Volkswagen brand. Under the latest plans, the strategic target of 1 million electric cars is expected to be reached by the end of 2023, two years earlier than previously predicted. The Volkswagen brand expects 1.5 million electric cars to be produced in 2025. What about Tesla's future lineup? The Tesla Model Y should be coming out very soon in the coming weeks or months, and we should start seeing volume deliveries sometime around the middle of this year. This is, of course, the SUV version of the Model 3 and has been predicted by Elon Musk and Tesla to become their best-selling vehicle. 
Either late this year or early next year, we should start seeing the first deliveries of the Tesla Semi, and this is of course going to be a very important vehicle for the commercial space. The much anticipated new Tesla Roadster should be coming out sometime in 2021. It'll have over 620 mile range, as well as a zero to 60 miles per hour time of 1.9 seconds. Also in late 2021 and early 2022, we should see the Tesla Cybertruck, which is going to be an amazing vehicle with a stainless steel exterior, of course a polarizing design, but an incredible value when you look at the cost and you look at that compared to the range and the features that you get. I recently did a video about Tesla's clear path to a million vehicle deliveries by the end of 2022. The press release that I read just a couple minutes ago said that VW plans to deliver 1 million vehicles by the end of 2023 and somewhere around 1.5 million vehicles by the end of 2025. By the end of 2022, Tesla will not only be manufacturing vehicles out of Fremont and Gigafactory Shanghai, but Gigafactory Berlin will also be producing vehicles as well. And as we move into 2025, there of course could be another Gigafactory announced at some point as well. So in 2025, VW is estimating 1.5 million BEV sales, whereas Tesla most likely will be well over 2 million by then and still maintain their lead. Now, in conclusion, in my opinion, five years from now, the two leaders in battery electric vehicle sales will be Tesla and VW in that order. VW has made a strong commitment to electric vehicles and does have some very compelling future electric vehicles. Looking forward 10 years in the future, it's possible that VW could eventually catch up to Tesla, but I don't think this will happen in the near future. With all the information that we have now, Tesla appears to be the clear market leader for years to come. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed it. If you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button so other people can find the video. As well as if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button so you'll know when future content is released. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the bell icon so you get the notification when a new video is uploaded. Thank you so much.